Hello everyone. In the prior sessions, we explored what is a corporation. We looked at advantages of a corporation, disadvantages, how the corporation is formed. We looked at basic terms related to corporate equity section, including the par value of a stock. What does that mean? Outstanding shares, authorized shares, shares issued and outstanding. Great. We know the basics. Today, we are going to take this a step further. We are going to start to issue, to sell shares of the company's stock and record those transactions in a journal entry. So a company sells shares, they sell common stock. What do they expect to receive in return? Cash. Most of the time, I would say over 98% of the time, companies issue stocks for cash. So they sell you, they, they issue the stock or they sell the stock to the public, they receive cash in return. And the people that buy the stocks, those are called investors, shareholders, whatever you want to call them, owners. This is to raise capital. Why do, why do we need to raise capital? To operate the business. But is this the only reason why we sell stocks? Not at all. We can sell stocks, we can issue stocks, specifically not sell, issue stocks in exchange for services. So if someone provided a service for the company and the company don't have cash to pay them, or if they choose to pay them with common stock and the other party agree, we issue stocks for services, for expenses. Sometimes we could issue stocks to pay off the debt. So if we have a debt at the bank or with the lender, they will say, we don't have the cash to pay you. Will you accept stocks in return? And if they accept, great, we settle that debt. We could also settle our debt with vendors. So a stock can be issued for anything, but 98% of the time, the vast majority of the time, the company wants cash because with cash, they can do anything. They can pay off their debt, they can pay their expenses, pay their vendors, so on and so forth. And as we learned in the prior session, we have stocks, par value stocks, no par value stocks. We would look at transaction that involve both par value issuing stocks with a par value, issuing stocks with no par value. You want to know the difference. And if you know what a par value is, please look at the prior session. But you should be good to go as long as you follow. At the end, we will work a multiple choice question from Farhat Lectures. And this is the foundation for issuing common stock, for putting common stock on the books in the equity section for the first time. So the company now, from an accounting perspective, it starts to exist. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, FarhatLectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Starting with the first example, on August 12, a company issued 25,000 shares of $8 par value. Usually the par value is not that high and receive $200,000 in cash. Here's the accounting entry for this. Well, the easiest one is to do what? Is to start with the cash. If the cash amount is 200,000, we debit cash 200,000. Now, we're gonna take, to complete the common stock entry, what do we do? We'll take the number of shares, and I, I'm going to write this slowly because we did this in the prior session very slowly. Number of shares times the par value. And that's going to give us common stock. The number of shares in this example is 25,000 
times the power value equal to 8 and guess what that's equal to 200,000 so we happen to have sold the shares exactly for the par value now in the real world that does not happen that way shares are usually sold more than the par value because i showed you in the prior example that the par value in the real world is very small especially for new company 0 0.001 0 0.01 or a dollar or a quarter i just made up this example to show you the journal entry so since in this scenario we sold it exactly at par value we have no APIC account additional paid in capital because there's no APIC account let's look at the more realistic example but we just want to make sure we make the point what if the company sells 25,000 shares for $11 instead of 8 let's look at the math 25,000 shares times $11 that's 275,000 in cash let's always start with cash because that's the easy number we received cash 275,000 debit cash 275 after the cash we deal with common stock what's the formula for common stock it's the number of shares times the par value we already know that 25,000 times 8 equal to 200,000 now without doing any math anything that's left above common stock is called additional paid in capital so basically the extra three dollars which is seventy five thousand dollar three dollars times twenty five thousand shares the additional paid in capital in addition to, in addition to the par we are three dollars above par is a big additional paid in capital as i showed you from the nvidia balance sheet from the prior session usually not usually additional paid in capital is way larger than the common stock it's not the other way around but i'm trying to make the point here to make sure you understand how we're getting to common stock number of shares times the par value number of shares times the par value for common stock please remember this it's going to make your life much much easier in your advanced accounting courses let's take a look at when the company sells a no par value stock huh, that's easy if they don't assign any par value let's assume the company sold 1500 shares at 35 dollar no par value easy take 1500 times 35 the cash is if the math is right is 52500 the common stock 52500 because we have no additional paid in capital everything is dumped into common stock there's no paid in capital to worry about now so far we've been issuing stocks for cash and that's usually the case we issue stocks that's the reason why we issue stocks we issue stocks to receive cash but is this the only reason why we issue stocks not at all we we can issue stocks to receive something else sometimes we don't have the cash to buy something what we do is we offer the seller stocks we tell them look we don't have cash would you accept stocks for example if we want to buy a land and we don't have money for that land we might issue stocks to the seller if the seller agrees we have a deal so on september 5th a company issues they sold 5,000 shares with a 25 dollar par value in exchange for a land valued at 40,000. now start with what you received in value rather than receiving $140,000 in cash and we are, you are told here that the land is worth 140 so we're making it easy for you we're telling you we know the value of the land you start by recording the land 140,000 now we have to credit common stock because we issued new shares what is the what is the formula for common stock number of shares 5,000 shares times the par value. If we take 5,000 shares times the par value, common stock is 125K, and anything left is dumped into additional paid in capital, which happens to be 15,000. 15, we can also issue shares rather than to buy an asset. We can issue shares if we want to pay for services, for expenses. We can issue shares for anything to pay off our debt to pay for expenses in this example the company issued 800 shares $12 par value in exchange for 18,000 worth of consulting services so somebody did some work for us they sent us a bill for 18,000 we don't have 18,000 we told them look we're gonna give you 
800 shares of our $12 par value stock. Well, we have an expense worth of 18,000. Let's record the expense. We issued shares. How much is the common stock? Number of shares times the par value. The number of shares times the par value equal 9,600, 9,600. Anything left is additional paid in capital. It's a plug, 8,400. And here we issued stocks for services against an expense. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Isaac Corporation sold or issued 22,000 shares of their $2 par value common stock at $13. Start with the easy part. The easy part is to take the number of shares, 22,000 multiplied by 13. So you know how much cash you received and this way it's going to make it easier for you to start to eliminate entries. So if we take 22,000 shares times $13, the company received $86,000 in cash. So here it says credit cash, we can take out C. We're left with A and B. So this is the cash, 286,000. I would, second, I would compute common stock. Common stock is the number of shares times $2. And I explained this many times. Number of shares times the par value give you common stock. That's going to give me a common stock of 44,000. This will stay common stock of 286. I could eliminate B. Credit common stock 44, that will stay. So now I'm between A and B. Well, 286, 286 minus 44, let's say, 286 minus 44,000. What I'm left with is 242, and that 242 is credit paid in capital. Here we're crediting credit stock liability. There's no such thing as stock liability. We credit paid in capital in excess of par or APIC, which is 242. Therefore, D is out. A is the correct answer. So we debit cash, credit common stock, and anything left, 242000 is credited to additional paid in capital. What should you do? Farhatlectures.com. Look at additional practice questions, resources, multiple choice. That's going to help you. Whether you are an accounting student, CPA, CMA candidate, good luck and invest in yourself.